Alright lads, are you looking for an easy way to grind out the cheeky British Tetrian Enlisted? Well look no further than the A13 Mark II squad. As you can probably imagine, this is a premium tank squad for the game Enlisted. It is only usable for the British team in the campaign the Battle of Tunisia. You can pick this squad up for the relatively low price of 1,250 gold coins. The equivalent of about 15 to 20 dollars or euros. The tank itself is known as a cruiser tank. Now you may be wondering, what exactly is a cruiser tank? Well, it's pretty well known that the British weren't very good in terms of tank design. You had cruisers and infantry tanks. These designations were basically took from the navy. The infantry tanks were based off battleships, slow and well armoured, with hard hitting guns. They were the main firepower and fighting force of the army. And then you had the cruiser tanks, like the A-13 we have here. These were much faster, a lot less armoured, and generally armed with smaller quick firing guns. They were basically designed to act like cruisers in a naval sense, rushing off on their own, acting independently of infantry. Basically 20th century light cavalry. While this idea was pretty stupid in real life, it's actually surprisingly effective and enlisted. But first, let's explain what a premium pack is. In War Thunder, you have a premium vehicle, which has a rank and battle rating. The rank of the premium determines what you can unlock with this vehicle, and the battle rating obviously determines which battles you're fighting. That's different in Enlisted. In Enlisted, you have campaigns, as well as the Allied or Axis teams. If you purchase a premium squad on the Allied team in, say, the Invasion of Normandy, you can only use this premium squad on the Allied team in the Battle of Normandy. You will not be able to use this squad in any of the other campaigns currently in Enlisted. This means if you want a premium squad in at least all the battles you fight in, you'd have to purchase at least 8 different premium squads. There's 4 campaigns and 2 sides per campaign for a total of 8 squads. Premium squads are also very expensive. If you wanted to purchase 8 of them, you'd basically be like Britain at the end of 1945. Broke as fuck. But hopefully in this video, we'll cover whether it's worth purchasing this squad. So what do we get with this premium squad? Well obviously we get the tank. We also get 4 crew members each of which are level 4 and have 5 crew skills. Every member of the crew has the same following skills, plus 10% speed of changing seats in a vehicle, plus 200% health restored by medcacks, plus 20% maximum durability values of repaired parts, plus 20% speed of repair, and another 30% speed of changing seats in the vehicle. These skills aren't particularly good to be honest. The enhanced repair speed is quite alright but, in my opinion, this is a pretty poorly trained crew especially compared to some of the other premium tanks and enlisted. Each of these crew members also comes with a sidearm, as well as a knife. But what about the tank itself? Well, being a premium, this is of course a level 5 vehicle. Basically, it's fully upgraded. With the tank's engine giving it 340 horsepower, this tank is quite snappy, and gets around the battlefield at a decent pace, at a maximum speed of 47 km per hour. While the tank can go fast, it's only fairly mediocre when it comes to traversing, so in my opinion, I'd say that this tank is mobile, but not really manoeuvrable. We then come on to a downside in my opinion, which is the armour. To be fully honest with you lads, when it comes to the armour, this is absolutely awful. The Germans and Italians didn't even need anti-tank guns to get through this thing. They could literally just pick up a rock and throw it straight through the bloody front of it. I mean, the thickest part of the armour on this tank is 30mm thick. At point blank range, some 50 caliber machine guns would punch through that. Not impressive at all. The rest of the tank, at least from the front, is only 14mm thick. Both the upper frontal plate and the entirety of the turret face is the same 14mm thickness. This makes it incredibly weak to pretty much all weapons on the battlefield. You can be penetrated by all of the Italian and German tanks, as well as all of the anti-tank rifles from the front, as long as the enemy shoots the top, weaker part of your armour. And due to the crew members being pretty tightly packed inside the turret, a single penetrating round is likely to knock out all three crew members. This is worse depending on what exactly penetrates you. The Panzer III in the German-Italian Tetra is likely going to one-shot you no matter what, whereas the beginner Italian tank, the one with the 20mm autocannon, is likely just to shred you, but not one-shot you. Overall, the armour though is very disappointing. But to be fair to the A13, these tanks were not designed to be defensive. Like I said in the introduction, they were basically designed to be like infantry, to exploit weaknesses in the line and cause havoc in the enemy's rear guard. We then come on to the firepower. This is the 40mm quick firing 2 pounder gun. This wasn't stabilised, but it had a sort of shoulder stabiliser. The gunner could basically brace the gun on his shoulder and keep it somewhat stabilised. This feature is currently not in Unlisted, although it may be added in a future update, but I remain doubtful of that. 
Regardless, you can carry 87 rounds of ammunition, split between high explosive and solid shot armor piercing. The reload is pretty fast at around 4 to 5 seconds. Let's talk a little bit more about this ammunition. Considering this gun is only a 40mm cannon, its performance, both chemically and kinetically, is rather poor. The armor piercing round does struggle to penetrate the front of all of the Italian tanks. Even the starter armored Italian car requires some careful aiming to penetrate and you're basically shit out of luck if you come up against the Panzer III, as that is largely impenetrable from the front. So the cruiser is pretty bad when it comes to its anti-tank capabilities. But what about anti-infantry? Well, it's a bit of a mixed bag. Again, only being a 40mm in diameter, it doesn't have that high splash damage that you find on some of the larger guns, like 75mm for example. This means it's hard to kill groups of enemies, they have to be pretty close together to get multiple kills in a single shot. The upside of being such a small gun though, is that you do have a very high fire rate, as I've already mentioned. There are lots of positives and negatives towards each guns. This 40mm gun is fast firing and can act like a long range sniper rifle, but a larger gun like a 75mm can be fired into buildings and splash enemies inside without being able to see them, something which this gun cannot do. But the larger 57mm gun found on the Crusader can do, especially, as I've already said, Unless it is a largely defensive game, having this smaller gun is a weakness in my opinion. Nobody can make an argument that this tank is overpowered, but it is surprisingly good at killing infantry. And mainly lads, it's due to its coaxially mounted machine gun. Now this isn't unique, every other tank in the game has a coax mounted machine gun, but the combination of the fast firing high explosive launcher, as well as your 7.7mm Vickers gun, does make it very good at ripping through enemy infantry. However, if an enemy tank shows up, or god forbid a Stuka, then you're basically shit out of luck. Unlike some of the other tanks in War Thunder, especially premium ones, you do not have a coaxially mounted machine gun operated by the commander. This is a negative, as if enemy infantry get too close to you, you can't pop out of the turret and rapidly kill them, something which you can do on the other premium tanks in game, such as the Jumbo, Firefly and Panzer IV. So we've covered the positives and the negatives of the A13 cruiser tank, so is it actually worth picking up this squad? Well, the Tunisia campaign is the newest campaign added to Enlisted, and so far, it has the least amount of content present. Whereas most of the other campaigns go up to level 33 on all sides, the Tunisian campaign only goes up to level 29, and is still fairly bare bones. There are only a few maps in the Tunisia campaign, which are slightly repetitive. The weapons are also a little bit copy and paste, mainly from the other campaigns. This isn't a bad thing though, and I have enjoyed playing the Tunisian campaign a lot. I initially picked up this premium squad, as I wanted to grind to level 18. I'd got the 5 star crusader tank from Twitch Drops, and wanted it to put in a lineup. I used the A13 crusader to grind up to level 18, and it is a very very good grinder. You usually get a lot of infantry kills during the game, and while it does struggle to deal with enemy tanks, you can pixel peep, flank the enemy, or pray to god one of your friendlies bombs it with his plane. Either way, this is a fairly balanced premium. It's not overpowered, but still efficient at grinding out. It's also very reasonably priced, at only 1,250 golden coins. So lads, if you do want to get your foot in the door in the British tech tree, well British and American tech tree technically, then I'd highly recommend the A13. It's cheap, effective, fun to play, and you get to roleplay pissing off Rommel. As always, I've been Sarko Sniper, and thank you very much for watching lads. I'll see you in the next one.